Live from San Francisco, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2015. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media, with special thanks to Docker. Now your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with Stu Miniman. We're at DockerCon 2015 in downtown San Francisco. We've been here all day today. We're going to be here all day tomorrow, going wall to wall, bringing you kind of the energy and the mojo and what's going on here at DockerCon. Stu, a lot of energy. We started out the day. The halls have been full. The people are excited. What did you think? Yeah, so, so Jeff, we talk about one of the big things in IT today is that we want to help companies move fast. And what really you know, stuck out to me is how, you know, we knew how fast Docker was growing, but when you talk about some of the specifics, you know, for example, Ben Golub, you know, came on and he said, oh, you know, that OCP, uh, you know, the open container, uh, you know, format that we c c came out with, we started that like three weeks ago, and actually I was talking to some of the Docker people, they're like, yeah, it wasn't even a full three weeks. The plugins, uh, you know, we had Patrick on uh, from the, the, the technical staff, and he's like, oh yeah, I joined three months ago and I'm doing all these things. From, you know, start to getting something out in the market to iterating on this, I've never seen something moving so fast. You know, we talked about traditional enterprise, you know, software life cycles is, you know, kind of 18 months, maybe 12 months, you know, OpenStax releasing every six months. Docker's in like two month clips. Right. And boy, is it just agile and fast. And I, I, you, you know, you think about the old Moore's Law, how fast things go. If we just go on a faster time cycle and let software take over the world, uh, I, I think Adrian Cockroft said, you know, we've gone to plaid. So. <laughs> yeah, Adrian was interesting. He said, you know, it's all about speed. It's all about moving. I loved uh, uh, Patrick who, who talked about, you know, this is very similar in the, in the enterprise software development space as when he was at Netscape, and really seeing an opportunity to redefine the way applications are built and deployed. Um, I thought uh, Matthew from Lyft was really interesting. You know, talking about speed, where they hire a person comes to work in the, uh, in the morning on Monday, they get their laptop, they get a little introduction, they get a couple of JIRA tickets by lunch, and they're actually pushing code into production and expected to push code in production and comfortable with pushing code into production before the end of their first day. So this whole concept of really removing barriers to productivity. And I think it was also um, Matthew talking about, uh, you know, there's been lots of development in, in Moore's Law and in networking and in CPUs and in memory and now Flash is coming down the pike, but how do we increase, increase the productivity of the developers and move the barriers away? And there's nothing that says that quite like you start in the morning on Monday and you're pushing production code at the end of the day. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing, Jeff, uh, you know, what, what we're talking about here, but it, let, let's stop for a second because, you know, while there's this drumbeat and everybody's really excited, it is still really early days. We actually had some good conversation in the crowd chat today uh, from people talking about, you know, what is the reality in the enterprise and how right. it's do doing. Right. I mean, when we're talking to companies like, you know, Lyft and Orbitz, you know, relatively young companies, uh, you know, we had the guy on from Lyft today and said, you know, how did you do things three years ago, it's like, well, Lyft didn't exist three years ago. And we do stuff on Amazon. So it's easier to start with kind of Greenfield on this. Um, but, you know, we have, uh, what was it? It was uh, the incremental revolution, as I think what Solomon talked about in the keynote this morning, uh, because it is difficult to get kind of the old ways uh, to, 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 you know, see to, to the new way. So, you know, you're going to start with some new develop, um, some new applications, get your developers engaged and working on this, and they're going to be that growth engine uh, to kind of push things forward. Yeah, and we just had Kamal on from EMC, and he was talking about large production loads, and, and I think he mentioned uh, healthcare, I think he mentioned financial services, I can't remember, there's one other vertical customer he talked about. So, you know, it's slowly moving in. It was finance. Um, it was yeah. finance, yeah. yeah. So, it's coming, but I think, um, Again, I think the Netscape thing is very powerful. Uh, didn't really know the ramifications of browsers in the early days, but look, you know, kind of look where we are now, and I think um, we're always kind of balancing where we are now and the tropic disillusionment and all that kind of stuff, but in the long run, you know, it's getting developers to buy into your program, and, and, and Ben's comments about the really rapid rise of contributors and, and code being put in, as we go to a ton of shows, Stu, you know, everyone's like, how do we engage developers? How do we get the developers excited about our stuff? How do we get them to choose their next marginal hour of time developing on our stuff versus somebody else? Clearly there's something there where you wouldn't see this crazy rapid 
uh, growth. Yeah, absolutely, Jeff. Of all the shows we go to, for me, like Amazon reinvents the one that has a lot of developers. You know, here seems to be the kind of the epicenter of where you know the, the really fast changes happening. Amazon's here, Microsoft's here. You know, uh, you know, IBM, VMware, EMC, Cisco, HP. VMware. You know, everybody's here. I mean, Jeff, my email has been popping all day with the Hey, Stu, uh, we made an announcement about Docker, and we're hopping on this. And you know, companies that uh, you know weren't in phase one rollout of uh, you know the OCP stuff. Well, that's because you know, heck, there's some of those companies that in three weeks they probably can't get through the legal knot hole of getting approval for something, right? You know, we, we all know, heck, you know, just getting, when we put a, an event together, you know, three weeks, can we make sure we have, you know, light, set, power, you know, internet? It's, you know, moving at software speed is pretty tough, um, and it, it's it's uh, it's amazing to watch this ecosystem. So what about the, what about kind of the dark side, right? Every coin's got two sides. What, what do you see as some of the, the short-term challenges, the mid-term challenges? Um, are they just regular growing pains, or are there any significant hurdles that you see that need to be overcome? What's kind of your yeah, take? Yeah, so, so I liked, you know, Docker talked about their experimental releases. So mm -hmm. experimental means, you know, not quite ready uh, for, for prime time. There were a couple demos this morning that failed. I mean, and the demo failed, and then the backup didn't work, which is just the demo gods not falling into place, but it'll be memorable. We'll, we'll, t we'll talk about it for a little bit. Um, but, you know, networking was a big gap. Um, they bought Socket Plane. Now, I actually know a bunch of the Socket Plane guys. You, you're going to, going to be interviewing John Willis tomorrow, was part of that team. It was six guys. And they've been part of Docker for three months, and already they, they've got you know this really cool stuff that they released, uh, multi-host uh, networking out of the box, micro-segmentation, uh, and standard service discovery. Um, so that's phenomenal. But, I mean, it's early, and they're partnering with you know Weave and Cisco and VMware and a bunch of others. So the network needs to get baked out. Uh, the storage stack needs to get baked out. Stateful applications, you know, it's really early for that space. Um, but, you know, we, we, we've seen this story play out for every technology. It starts in, you know, the, the less critical, you know, in, environments start with test dev. You know, we're all with the dev environments, but help to drive those new apps. Um, and, you know, security is still, um, a, you know, growing. Uh, there's the Docker trust model, and how does that bake out? Um, you know, great example, uh, I talked about in the keynote, the GSA. So if the federal government, um, you know, has sorted out how to work with it and they're comfortable with it, um, you know, there's hope. But doesn't mean that we're we're ready. It's still early, early days. Right, I talked right. on uh, with the Cluster HQ guys this morning and said, okay, if we use the VMware example, we're at like VMware desktop, which was like, you know, the early 2000s, like, you know, when ESX and GSX were coming out long before vSphere, before vMotion started. I mean, we don't have, you know, quite the container vMotion just yet, but it, it's, it's all baking out and it's getting there. And, um, you know, when you've got so many people committing from around the world to so many companies, you know, just pouring into this ecosystem, you know, let's figure out what the hurdles are, let's knock down the red flags, and let's march forward because, you know, boy, it, it, it's just uh, taken over a bit, big part of the discussion in the software world and everywhere we go. Uh, Docker has been the drumbeat. Yeah, and, and Ben was ripping through stats faster than I can write him down in terms of the, the contributions, the commits, you know, it, it's just a, I think Adrian said, just, you know, a hyper-growth yeah, kind of well, situation. Yeah, just, just, just to pound through some of those notes, I've got the slide in front of me. Oh, good. Uh, they went from 460 contributors to 1,300 in the last year. That's a 183% growth. Uh, there's now 40,000 projects on GitHub, hub, a 500% growth. Job openings that mention Docker, it went from 2,500 to 43,000. So, you know, we talked about what was the next hot new job. It's like developers, oh, hey, do you know what Docker is? I mean, I remember, you know, just to date myself, I showed my wife, like, the first, like, web browser. And when she came out of school, it was like, hey, uh, do you know this internet thing? And she's like, oh, yeah. And she did, like, web design and editing online and everything. So anybody, you know, coming out of school, um, you know, I talked to lots of young people that are like, you know, getting into coding and it's not that hard to get started as we said from start to, to you know doing stuff is you could in a couple of days start picking this up but 900 it's a I'm sorry 1700 percent growth 43,000 docker job openings listed in June of 2015 um, and there's been over you know 3.5 million boot to docker downloads uh, you know you know over a thousand percent growth um, and half a billion 
containers have been downloaded. So, you know, just, I mean, ridiculous numbers. I always graph this stuff out, and, you know, we've almost gone vertical for some of these things. And, you know, boy, it, it, it's almost, you know, we need new math to come up with <laughs> by the time we come back, uh, you know, next year at this show. Um, I've been real excited to be here, Jeff. You know, uh, you know, from, from our team, you know, this is an event that we knew, you know, we want to be in on the ground floor. Um, really, all the guests we had on were, just, you know, so good. Um, so, you know, I, I was excited to be able to fly out here just for a short time um, and, and be part of it. Right, and we got another, we, we, we kick off today, or excuse me, tomorrow is uh, day two of our wall-to-wall coverage with Solomon. So yeah. we don't uh, we don't miss a beat. We jump right back into it with Solomon Hikes, who obviously the founder and CTO of Docker, kind of the, the, one of the big brains behind the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, Jeff, you know, Solomon, some people say he's the fanatical dictator. There you go. Open source, you know, technology. <laughs> so um, I'm not saying he stands over the shoulder of everyone writing code, but he knows what's there. And it's good to see what he's building out the team. I like that we got Patrick on here today to talk about how they're building that brain trust. And Ben really did a good job in our interview of talking about what does Docker do, what do, you know, the, the community do, what does the broader ecosystem do, and laying that out. And, Jeff, you want to talk to the dark side, they'll be growing pains. So we've all all seen this story of ecosystem grows and then we eat some of the ecosystem right we had the right. bump with the kind of core os and you know we've seen it whether you're talking about vmware and what they built with their ecosystem or take a facebook and how they built an ecosystem and, and kind of ate a lot of it so you know we know how this plays out in technology but you know everybody is excited to be here right as you said getting the shirts getting the legos and getting the knowledge i mean people are you know psyched here um to, it, it almost to me feels like a large meetup so it doesn't feel like an industry show. It is people geeking out and getting into the weeds um, and understanding what they can do and how they can be part uh, of this. Yeah. It's, uh, at OpenStack, they had the jackets, you know, we are OpenStack, and it definitely has that kind of feel here. Uh, and I'm going to be back in the open source stuff, uh, you know, later this week with Red Hat Summit back in Boston. So, uh, yeah, boy, Jeff, it's spring tour, it's been amazing. It's I mean, been amazing. I mean, got some reflections the last couple of months. <laughs> Well, we've been going, 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 and we're uh, everybody's ready to take a breath. The gear's ready to take a breath. The uh, airplanes are ready to take a breath. But we've been going hard. But there's just so much going on right now. As we talk at many of our shows, there's just this, this, this confluence of events between big data and cloud and flash and a lot of stuff going on in the software. Where it's just a really, really exciting time to be in tech. And and unlike maybe the last bubble, where a lot of it was just kind of weird B two C things. Um, now the B2C things are reflective of big enterprise shifts, and you know we overuse Lyft and Uber, but I do think it's so demonstrative in showing how these new technologies are, are really changing a lot of different businesses. So we've been we've been busy, but you know the energy just to see like EMC seems to be at all the little shows, HP seems to be at all the little shows, yeah, IBM, IBM is at yeah. all the little shows. So the fact that those guys are taking off their suits, I, I took off my tie in, in deference to the show. Girls, thanks for my Father's Day gift. But, um, you know, the fact that, that, that they're getting down in the community, this open source thing is really working this this kind of, we've always had kind of coopetition in technology, but it really seems to have taken on a whole different leg when you're in these kind of combination of open source, not open source, core. I think uh, Patrick really talked about where do you put the connection points? How do you make great connection points? But before I let you go, Stu, because I know you're flying out tonight back east, and, and you asked a question, I'm going to ask you, you know, what are some of the roadmaps? What are some of the signals that we should be just kind of keeping an eye out? Not not whether Docker's going to be successful or not. I think clearly it looks like it's on a way, but but just kind of uh, maturity milestones, if you will, or, or adoption milestones. What, what are you looking for? Yeah, so I mean, everybody is dipping their toe in and starting to work on it. You know, when you talk behind the scenes and say, you know, hey, are you running this in prod yet? And some are but many aren't and it's the maturity it's just getting comfortable with it um, because you know the, the developers uh, you know to, 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 to quote the you know the book by uh, the, the Red Monk guys it's you know developers are the new kingmakers so you know they, they are really uh, helping to move forward a lot of this um, you know I, I've seen for so long just the big air gap we have is you know how do we help move to those new models of applications and I, I think docker is you know right at the center of bridging uh, Solomon said in the keynote there it's you know there's lots of people with like innovative good ideas and there's lots of cool tech out there and this can be kind of that catalyst to help you know move things forward so you know what do I look for you know over the next year um, 
you know, boy, it, it's tough. It's going to scale and it's going to grow. Um, I'm, I'm worried when things move so fast that, you know, we're going to, like, throw a tire or something like that. <laughs> Certainly breaks um, a few and, things. And, you know, there's, something's going to go, you know, awry. So when you've got really big companies in here and big ecosystems, I mean, you, you mentioned a bunch of the enterprise companies, but, I mean, Amazon, big presence here. Microsoft, big presence here. You know, Google, I mean, we haven't talked a lot about Google today, but Google, what they're doing with Kubernetes, you know, Google Ventures, uh, you know, out there doing a lot there. Um, so, you know, some really big players, and you're going to have some gorillas, you know, stomping on some ground to try to, you know, get their, what they're owning. So I'm, I'm still a little worried today. It's small and it's early, and people are working together pretty well, but boy, there's tensions there. Um, and, you know, we will see how this goes forward. Um, the, the, the last note I'll say is, you know, there's always rumors that, like, Docker's going to be acquired. And, I don't get that feel here. It's like, you know, Ben doesn't sound like he wants to, you know, sell off. I mean, if somebody comes to, to with a ridiculous bag of money, you know, there's the investors and the shareholders that they have to consider. Um, but, you know, Docker's trying to build something here. They're growing that ecosystem, and, and they're moving the product and the revenue along in the right direction. So um, excited by what I see here. And, uh, you know, it's just as, as John Furrier always says, you know, we're, uh, you know, privileged to be able to really document this, be on the ground floor, uh, and bring this out to our community. Community. Yeah, well, thanks, and thank you, Stu, for flying out for the show. It's a great show, and just to wrap up on your on your thing, we've got Jerry Chin coming on tomorrow from Greylock, who's, I think this was his first investment in his new job, so uh, yeah, he's yeah, done you, pretty you, good, you know, huh? it's, uh, it's like, you know, <laughs> my first major league at bat, and, you know, you knock it's like it out of the park. Slam it's in like, the game you know, seven. If I was George Costanza, I'd be like, you know, just raise your hands and walk off on a high note. Yeah, so, so it's... It's a good deal. We'll be here again all day tomorrow, wall-to-wall -to -wall coverage from DockerCon 2015. I think we kick off at about 10 a.m. Right after the keynote. Right after the keynote. And the so keynote runs uh, till 10, 11, actually. 11 yeah. o'clock. So tune it back in here. We'll be going wall-to-wall. -wall. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm Jeff Frick, joined by Stu Miniman at DockerCon 2015 San Francisco. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Cube is starting to do their own events now, and it's really like the next step, the next evolution of the Cube. And really, it comes as a response to uh, the fact that we break markets more than we break news. And there are some markets where it's underserved by the existing event infrastructure. There's not enough events covering things that we're covering. And so we felt it's time to step out and maybe provide a venue for that ourselves. I think the Cube throwing as an event gives it its own identity. I think it's different from other forms of journalism. I was on the road so much that, you know, if you're spending, you know, 20 hours a week in hotels and airplanes and such, it, it just I ended up, my goal was to bang out a chapter a week. So it took about four months or so to get it done. This is an amazing segment with our friend and guest, Cube alumni, Bill Schmarzo. Big data, understanding how data powers big business. Read this book, it's really great. Our second company launching on the Cube. Tell us what your company is doing. Launch your company, go. Today, Paxata is launching the industry's first adaptive data preparation platform. We're also going to be announcing three very important and strategic partnerships with Tableau, ClickView, and Cloudera. Well, I think it means the company is building and growing, and I think the model's working.